In our first reading today from Isaiah, we see that Eliakim was sitting there given the ability to open and close doors at the palace. Does that make him the ultimate doorman? Well, let's find out. Be back after the introduction. Well, welcome back. Well, usually the church intentionally gives us readings that go together. It does this to sort of make a theological point or really make the clear a theme that will affect our lives and one that hopefully we can start to do and or continue to, to do. Uh, today's readings are pretty much as clear in that power as being given to two men. In Eliakim's case, he can open and close doors. Okay, great. God gave him the power of a doorman. Obviously not. No, no. He's taken over for Shebna, who, as it was said in the readings, was the master of the palace or governor of the palace under King Hezekiah. So I challenge you to find the rest of the story. It give you something to do and during breakfast, and you guys can talk about, you know, and what he's doing, what caused it, all this stuff, and all I can do is give you a hint, tell you that, well, talk about digging your own grave, so to speak. So, anyway, Shebna was filled with his own glory, and God was less than impressed. So instead, Eliakim would have control of the doors. Who gets in, who gets out. It was a very powerful um, position, and Shebna's pride went to his head. That did Jerusalem no good at all. Eliakim's humility would serve the king Hezekiah very well. Now, it may not surprise you to find out Peter was made the first pope in today's gospel. Jesus handed him the power to loosen the bind on earth, and that would also affect heaven. Now, that is a whole lot of power, and to have someone full of pride and desire for power, that could be a problem. Uh, Peter was not that way. He seemed to understand his weaknesses when compared to Jesus. And just a couple weeks ago, we saw him walk on water, and he let his faith pass away, and he began to sink. Jesus had to save him. Now, we see stories like this all throughout the Gospels, and this should give us so much assurance. Now, Jesus did not put the perfect in charge. He did not put the powerful in charge. Now, I've heard that the popes of today are strong and exude the glory of God. I have never met a pope, but I have met Bishop Malloy and Bishop Doran before him. They exuded glory of God, and it was tempered with humility, though. I have heard from our priests who have met popes the same thing. Now, many people point to this reading and maybe talk about confession, and it, it is true. There, there are parts that point there. Now, as a deacon, I do get to hear a whole lot of confessions. Now, I can't absolve sins, but it is truly is a humbling thing when someone would come to me for advice or get suggestions on this topic or another. I have to keep this humility and try my best to listen to the Holy Spirit as he guides me through anything I may say. And I am really hoping for your sakes that he's guiding me here as well. So today we can see the crowning of our first pope. God spoke through Peter just as he speaks through Pope Francis. All the way through the ecclesial heredity. By the grace of God, one of the successors of the apostles, Bishop Malloy, ordained me as a deacon. He ordained Father Claydar and Father Reichardt as priests. His predecessor, Bishop Duran, ordained Monsignor Deutsch. The line goes all the way back to our readings point in time. This is what allows Father to consecrate the Eucharist and feed his flock with what has been entrusted to him. We can be assured that the Eucharist meal which Jesus passed on to the apostles is the same Eucharistic meal we will be having today. But we can't let sin get in our way as pride doomed Shebna. 
We live in a world and we shine brightly as Christ shines through us. And we want those graces of Christ to flow within our blood and our bodies so that we can be bright Christs to all people. So, take care of yourself. God bless. Be good. Play nice. Thank God. <laughs>